this is a video of our Unimog U1300L, currently for sale. It's a 1990. It's got the OM366A turbocharged motor, the higher power input transmission, the UG65, the axles are the high speed axles. So this is the, the holy grail, the 1990 Unimogs for the U1300L. We'll do around 62, 63 miles an hour on the highway. You can push a little bit faster, but it's happiest between 55 and 62. Might seem a little random, but I'll go through a bunch of stuff on the Unimog, kind of give you a brief idea of what we got here. And then I can go through a bunch of the accessories and stuff that we have for it. So hopefully you find this video helpful. Hey, all right, this is the startup video for the Unimog. Um, it's been sitting here overnight, it's cold. So first thing is battery. And then, so now what you do is a manual throttle. So crank it up, get the RPMs up a little bit. There it goes. So now typically what we'd have to do is sit here and wait for the pressure to build. The air pressure held overnight, so we're good. So I'll show you. All right, so what we're waiting for, or what we would be waiting for, is the pressure to build. Below, I think seven bar, the parking brake is automatically set. So right now we're good to go. Uh, I'm gonna let it warm up for just a second before we actually go. Uh, the manual throttle control.
red light indicates, this is from the German Army, that we're doing above 85 kilometers an hour. So, it'll sit here and cruise all day long. Right now we're doing 92 kilometers an hour. Uh, slight uphill. Yeah. Cruise spot is fine. On this 1990 Unimog U1300L, this is the turbocharged OM 366A motor with the UG365 transmission, which is a heavier duty transmission with the high speed axles. It's got a new air compressor. Front-mounted hitch, Continental MPT81 365-8020. Uh, they only have maybe 2,000 miles, 3,000 miles on them. Uh, we just rotated them about 500 miles ago, so you can see the depth still plenty on there. Uh, we have new front shocks, dual 12 volt batteries for 24 volt system. I believe it's a 34 gallon tank. Might be 32. I have one. Jerry can to go with it. The other one's out of stock. Storage boxes. There's one here, one on the other side, and then two more mid midway. It's got the pull-out ladder. Rear view camera. Portal axles. So this one we did a full fluid change about 500 miles ago. Uh, so all the portals, the diffs, transmission, engine, all of it's been swapped out recently. It's got new bushings and then same up front. More storage boxes. These ones are very deep. They go about two, two and a half feet deep. There is an awning on the other side, which is a bag awning. And then on this side, there's two stainless steel eyelets with another awning for this side. That's where the spare went. These 36580 without some modifications couldn't fit in here. They were too big. So we opted for in the rear. So as far as the cab condition goes, the doors are in good shape. Not too much, anything under there. Probably could be resealed. The door jams themselves, those typically will, but they look pretty good here. These all look good. The fenders, they show a little bit of signs of it, just through this main crack area. The windshield's a pretty prone area. So this one's starting to show a little bit of signs of it right there. This side's fine. Doors look good. Some of the jams over here, they all look pretty good. A little bit of surface rust. Same thing with the fender on that one. The habitat is the ambulance back, so it's the all steel ambulance back. When we, we ripped out all the insulation and put in one inch foam. Interior height is 5'5. Five five. Got an electric hoist set up back there to lift the spare in and out, which I'll show you in the back doors here in a minute. 
this one's got a max air fan. So we had a very temporary solar setup and electrical setup in here. So on the roof, there's two 100 watt panels. There's an outside external SAE plug for external solar panels. Uh, max air fan, bed fan back there. We've got USBs here, and then there's some midpoint of the bed. There's two spots to hold your phones when you're in bed. There's one here, one midway. Um, there's wires ran for refrigerators and toilets. This bench, just empty. Plenty of storage in there. Right now, currently, there is an Eberspacher S2 D2L in here. We're planning on removing it. If that's something you'd like, let us know. We can leave it. All the windows have insulated window blinds in them. I'll show you the back. As far as the back goes, there's an electric hoist that attaches to that D-ring up there. And that's how you lift the tire in and out. The bed is currently just four C-clamps. You just remove the C-clamps on each side. And this bed would slide forward if you want to get your tire out. Or you can remove it completely and have the whole rear of the Unimog. It's about 5'5 five, five standing room inside. The whole thing has these aluminum tracks in them. And I've got a bunch of these left over. They have these really cool move around quick connection points that you can tie into. So that kind of gives you an idea. Back to the interior. We started adding these Range Rover seats. We have one for the passenger already installed. I have another one for the drivers. Um, just to see if one, we could get different seats in here, get a little more comfortable. I have another Range Rover seat for it. Great thing. Under the glove box, this glove box and the original heater was designed to go away. Uh, I got a vintage air system, under hood compressor and condenser that goes underneath the dash. I've already mocked it all up, made brackets for it, and it fits perfect underneath here. So right now I have a temporary um, fuse box with a relay to a power supply direct to the actual batteries. So we've got a 24 volt fuse box and then a converter for a 12 volt fuse box. This is just running any random accessories you've got. There's a temporary radio. This is just sitting inside of the cup holders right now. Um, the original radio is gonna go on the roof. I have the original headliner, um, but we were gonna make our own. Those fuse boxes were gonna go behind here. The vintage air system is very small. It doesn't take up much room in that area. The condenser takes up basically the whole club box, so I plan accordingly. That's all storage. Eight speed manual transmission. Four low, four high. Got your forward and reverse. Got the ether pump, manual throttle, the roof hatch that acts as a sunroof. I'll give you a view of the driver's side. Same thing with the sound deadening and insulation. Makes a huge difference. So over here, windshield washers. This is your, what do they call it? Infrared, like the blackout. So all lights go out, your headlights. I have another set of LED headlights for this thing to put on. Right now we're sitting at 70,000 kilometers, but I think that's like 43,000 miles. You have the, make it not so bright and almost completely blacked out. There's the 24 volt accessory plug up here, but I have off of that, um, fuse box under there. I've got two USBs running. So there's one there, one there. One is running your backup camera. And then I've got another one in there for a 12 volt socket. Um, 
The backup camera is wired to the back. It's a wireless. Uh, I've got one more for the front. Typically, I've installed one in that front corner over there, and that will tie into this as well. That's extra. Um, I just haven't had a chance to install it. The 4x4 actuator, uh, this valve was leaking, so I've replaced that. That's a new valve. This has typically been our cup holder area. And that's pretty deep as well. This was that piece right there. Plan on getting replaced, so I wasn't too worried about it, but I don't know if a bolt is missing or what, but it was a little loose on there. Still flips out, still functions. It's all tied into the heater, so everything works fine there. As far as accessories to go with the Unimog, there's a lot. I'll go through real quick. The manuals from Germany, they're translated to English. These are the high quality ones. These are not the printed off PDF versions. They're much nicer. Got a set of LED headlights to go with it. This is the entire vintage air system. Condenser, compressor, um, the little radio that goes in there, all the connection pieces, the hosing, everything. It's a full kit. We have done it before in an older truck and we called vintage air and we worked with them and pieced together an entire kit for it. So that's ready to go in there. You'd have to make a bracket for the condenser, correction, the compressor, and you'd be good to go. We got two cab mounts, two torque tube um, boots that need to go on. So I haven't had a chance to install them. Belts, lots of extra belts. I think there should be two of each in there. The roof, when we got it, would leak a little bit. So I've gone through and cocked the ceiling, but I've got all of the grommets for the roof to redo all the grommets on the roof. For the roof as well, that is also a grommet for the entire roof hatch. Brake lines, one of the brake lines was bad on the truck, so I've got all new brake line, all new fittings. Those are portal axle um, fill caps. One of those were busted as well, so that's a extras. Got an extra camera. Two jack stands big enough to hold the Unimog. That is rubber grommet for a pass-through. That's the safety jack um, to lift it. It's got a bunch of extensions on it. Works great. Six-ton jack. That box is a box. It's a German-issued uh, fill. So it ties into the Unimog air system, and you can fill your tires. That's one of the original cabinets from the Unimog. That's the hoist to lift up the spare tire in and out. Got cup holder attachments for the doors. There's two of them there. Got the extra Range Rover seat. Power works, I've tested all the motors. You have to rewire into the system if you want full power, but they all work. Two 60 by 16 inch sand ladders, aluminum sand ladders. Two front shocks for the front. Um, just haven't had a chance to install them. That's kind of a overview of a bunch of the accessories we have for this thing.